Good morning, students. Good morning, math enthusiasts. Our next lesson is going to be on trigonometric equations. But as a prerequisite, let me discuss for now Sukrita. Sukrita, just like Sakatawa, is a mnemonic device that is used in order to memorize some properties of the six trigonometric functions. We have here a table that is composed of the functions, its definition and representations, as well as um, the signs of the functions in particular quadrants. Quadrant 1, Quadrant 2, Quadrant 3, Quadrant 4. So we have here Quadrant 1, Quadrant 2, Quadrant 3, and Quadrant 4. Notice that the sign of your x and y in quadrant 1 are all positive. R is always positive. In quadrant 2, negative ang x, y is positive, r is positive. In quadrant 3, x is negative, y is also negative, and r is positive. In quadrant 4, x is positive, and y is negative, and r is also positive. Now, why is this concept important in trigonometric equations? So sometimes in trigonometric equations, we come across, oh, of course, this is an example of a trigonometric equation. Sine theta equals one half. Just like in algebra, you were asked to determine a particular value of x so that your equation is true. Say x plus one equals three is a conditional equation wherein there is a particular value of x when this equation is x plus 1 equals 3. Or this equation is true for a particular value of x. So x is determined by transposing 1 to the right side, and it becomes negative 1, and so x is equal to 2. So if x is equal to 2, then this equation is true because 2 plus 1 is 3. So in trigonometry as well, we shall be determining a particular value of theta in order for this equation to be true. Now, this theta is, of course, an angle measure. Theta, theta, theta. That theta could rotate from either in the first quadrant, it could be in the second quadrant, it could be in the third quadrant, and it could also be in the fourth quadrant. Of course, from the period coming from 0 degree to 360 degrees. Now, let's go back to sine theta equals 1 half. If you recall your graphs of trigonometric functions, this is the, the, the curve of the sine function. Where can you locate one half? So one half is somewhere here and here. So what are those corresponding angle measures? So notice that sine theta equals one half has two possible answers, two possible angle measures. It's found in quadrant one and quadrant two. Okay, so we will leave uh, answering or determining the value of angle theta when we proceed to trigonometric equations. But first, let me discuss Sukrita. This is a prerequisite of trigonometric equations. Now, sine theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse and its representation is y over r. Now, in each quadrant, let's determine what would be the sine of the sine function. Meaning, is it positive? Is it negative in particular quadrants? So, y in quadrant 1, y is positive and r is always positive. So, in quadrant 1, the sine function is positive. In quadrant 2, y is positive and r is positive. So, in quadrant 2, sine function is positive. In quadrant 3, y is negative and r is positive. So, in quadrant 3, sine function is negative. In quadrant 4, y is negative, r is positive, so the sine function is also negative. So as you can see, in the sine function, it is positive in quadrants 1 and 2 and negative in quadrants 3 and 4, meaning the sine function are positive in the upper quadrants but negative in the lower quadrants. Look at this. Sine and cosecant. So why cosecant? Why include cosecant? Because cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. If this is y over r, this is r over y. So what happens to the uh, quotient or the sine of the quotient will also be the same with the reciprocal functions. So 
The sine and cosecant functions are positive in the upper quadrants, 1 and 2, and negative in the lower quadrants, 3 and 4. Let's proceed to the cosine theta. Cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side, which is equal to x over r. So in the first quadrant, x is positive, so that r is also positive, so that in the first quadrant, cosine is positive. In the second quadrant, x is negative. So negative x plus positive r, which is always positive, the result is negative. In the third quadrant, x is negative. So negative divided by positive is negative. In the fourth quadrant, x is positive. So positive divided by r, which is always positive, is equal to positive. So the cosine function as well as its reciprocal function, second, are positive in quadrants 1 and 4, but negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So that means cosine and second functions are positive in right quadrants 1 and 4 and negative in left quadrants 2 and 3. Let's proceed to the tangent function. The tangent function is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side or y over x. Now, in the first quadrant, y is positive and x is positive. So positive divided by positive is positive. In the second quadrant, y is positive but x is negative. So positive divided by negative is negative. In the third quadrant, y is negative, x is also negative, and so negative divided by negative is positive. Finally, in the fourth quadrant, y is negative and x is negative, so negative divided by positive is negative. So as you can see, the tangent function is positive in quadrants 1 and 3, also with the cotangent function, but negative in quadrants 2 and 4. So, the tangent and cotangent functions are positive in alternate quadrants 1 and 3 and negative in quadrants 2 and 4. So, there is, this is where we derive our mnemonic device, sukrita, sine, upper, cosine, right, tangent, alternate. So, we focus on the first three simple functions because the reciprocals will follow. Again, sine is positive in upper, meaning negative just the lower. Cosine is positive in right, but negative in left. Tangent is positive in alternate 1 and 2, uh, 3, but negative in 2 and 4. So I hope Sukrita is easy for you to memorize because this is very important in identifying which quadrants would a sine function be positive? So take note, when you say sine theta equals one half, the function value is positive, and it's found in the upper quadrants, one and two. So suppose I give you one, sine theta equals negative one half. So where is that found? So here, which are the lower quadrants, three and four. Again, this is zero, 90, 180, 270, 360 degrees. So for you to understand better uh, how important is Sukrita in trigonometric equations, um, just view the next video on trigonometric equations. Thank you very much. Remember, math is easy to learn when one learns with enthusiasm. Bye!